Well, we're going to finish up the last section in this chapter, which uh, is about duration-based hedging. And we saw a measure of duration uh, earlier when we did uh, uh, one of the previous chapters. And if you've done a fixed income course, you certainly know how to calculate the duration of a bond portfolio, the duration of specific bonds. You understand uh, Macaulay duration, effective duration, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at hedging out a portfolio uh, considering the duration of the portfolio. And it's really, really just as simple as going back to the original hedge ratio we did back in Chapter 3 when we uh, looked at uh, using futures to hedge. We calculated the optimal hedge ratio and then just multiplying it by uh, a duration ratio. Simple as that. So let's have a look. We need some uh, terminology. Uh, v sub F is the value of a futures contract. D sub F is the duration of the underlying asset of this futures contract at expiration. We can figure that out. P is the value of the portfolio that we're hedging. We can see right away that if we have a value of a portfolio and V F is the value of the underlying futures contract, we can see that P divided by V will give us a rough estimate of the number of contracts we need to hedge this out. Already we're seeing that that would be the hedge ratio from chapter 3, right? Well, what about this duration business? DF was the duration of the underlying asset of the futures contract, which means DP is the duration of the portfolio at expiration. And from our calculation of duration, we know that to calculate the change in price of a portfolio is simply just negative the price of the portfolio times the duration of the portfolio times the change in interest rates. Well, it doesn't take much to see that if that happens at the portfolio level, the same thing must happen at the contract level. Because the contract, the value of a futures contract, let's say it's for 100000 we can say, well, that's a portfolio of $100,000. It just happens to have only one bond in it. So the change in that will be the change in the value of the portfolio times the duration of the portfolio times the change in interest rates. So all we're doing is we're taking a big portfolio that we have and hedging it out with a small portfolio, let's say $100,000 or whatever the value is, based on the value of the futures contract. Now, the important thing here, notice that these delta y's cancel out in both of these. Uh, it assumes a parallel shift in the yield curve. That, that's not always true. Anyone who's had a fixed income course knows that that's, that's not always true, but, you know, it's a good place to start. So, the uh, uh, optimal uh, hedge uh, for this, uh, uh, for a, any given portfolio with these variables is PDP over VF DF. What we're saying here is if we look at just the first part of this and you go back to chapter 3, that's your optimal hedge ratio. Is uh, Let's say we're uh, hedging out uh, uh, 10 million dollars and uh, each contract is for 1 million dollars. Well 10 million divided by 1 million is 10. But what we're doing over here is we're making this hedge ratio duration based. So it's a duration based hedge ratio. The hedge ratio is over here and this is a duration based hedge ratio. Because if both, if the, un, if, if the duration of the portfolio let's say is 8 and the duration of the futures contract, the asset underlying the futures contract is 8, they both have the same duration. All we have is the optimal hedge ratio. However, all this is doing is adjusting do we need more contracts or less contracts than the ratio implies based on the ratio of duration, also called a price sensitivity hedge ratio. So if we have the duration of our portfolio, if it is short, the underlying futures contract we will use will be the euro dollar futures contract. If we have longer duration on our portfolio, we'll use either treasury bond futures or treasury note futures. We can find the length of time that we want based on the futures to match uh, the duration of our portfolio. What we want to try to do is pick an underlying that has a duration very close to what we already have so that this ratio will be as close to one as we can get, one over one. So let's have an example and see how that plays out uh, in practice. So let's have a look at the example here. I'm taking it right from the book so that uh, that you can just follow along. It's August 2nd. We're sitting on a portfolio, a bond portfolio of $10 million. And we expect some interest rate volatility uh, over the next several months, all the way out to December. And we want to just, we just want to shove that aside. We don't want to deal with it. 
So our first step uh, to hedging this out would be to say, okay, well, we have a portfolio of $10 million. In December, what will the duration of the portfolio be? And we can calculate that. That's a straightforward uh, procedure. If you've done the fixed income course, you'll know that that's, uh, that can be done. So the duration will be 6.8. So we have our D, uh, our duration for the portfolio will be 6.8. What we'd like to do is choose a futures contract that is very, where the underlying asset has a duration very close to that. Well, 6.8, you can read that as 6.8 years. Uh, the closest one around there probably would be the 10-year Treasury bond contract. So we'll use that. So for December, we look up the Treasury bond uh, futures contract for that month. Then we look at the quote today, and we see it's 93.02 as of August 2nd. Each contract is for $100,000. So the value of the futures contract is 93,062.5 per contract. Problem is the underlying asset, right? Recall uh, that for a treasury bond, it is cheapest to deliver. So since we've chosen this as, as the contract we're going to use, we've got the value of the contract. We first have to identify the cheapest to deliver bond before we can come up with a duration measure for it. So we uh, look at uh, what, uh, what's available for that period of time, and we can identify a 20-year uh, government 12% uh, annual bond yielding 8.8 .8 is the cheapest to deliver at this point in time. So we will use that, calculate the duration, what the duration will be at this point in time, and we get 9.2. So there's the duration on the asset underlying the futures contract. We have the duration of our portfolio at this particular time. We have the current value of our portfolio, and we have the current value of a futures contract. So the optimal hedge ratio that we need in this respect is 10 million which is our portfolio, divided by 93,062.5, which is the value of each futures contract. Now, you'll recall from Chapter 3, this was the optimal hedge ratio, right? If we had 1,000 barrels of oil, or 10,000 barrels of oil to hedge, and each contract was for 1,000, we just did the, the division. But we have different, differing durations of our assets. The bond portfolio has got a duration of 6.8, However, our underlying has a duration of 9.2. So we will multiply it by the ratio of those two. So we should get something less than one. So we'll have whatever we have here. This looks like we'd need almost 100 of them to do it, 101, 102, times something less than one. Ta-da, 79.42 or 79 contracts. So it is the optimal hedge ratio, but we multiply it by the ratio of the durations to get a duration-based hedge ratio. Easy peasy.